Hello everyone, and welcome to another one of the videos in my series that I am now naming Review of Two. And just like in the previous other videos, I'll be flipping through and telling you guys what I think about two books, usually probably art books. This one here is All Color But the Black, The Art of Bleach by Tite Kuba. Um, Tite Kubo has a really interesting aesthetic and style um, to his art. As you can see, this is his older stuff here. Um, I really dig how, like, um, in his previous work, like Ichigo's chin and a lot of the chins and stuff like that weren't very round. They were more like uh, squarish. Um, which is pretty unique, because nowadays um, people are definitely rocking the rounded chin a lot more. Um, so that works pretty awesome. I would say he's pretty clean as far as like his line work. Um, I'm unsure if he uses the G pen exclusively or not, but I think he does. Um, it's very neat with the stuff that he produces, definitely for his colored works. And I really enjoy um, what he does with um, how he balances the light and dark when he uh, fills in a lot of black on, on the characters. Like, you know, how he's playing around with this type of shadow right here. How really uh, energetic the, the shape of the shadow looks in general. Just looks really cool. It's really cool group shots and stuff like that from the earlier days of Bleach. Like here he is again, just his really solid blacks and these really interesting little shapes and whatnot that uh that are basically supposed to be light points on the on uh, what they're wearing. Really cool sky background right there too. No lines usage it looks like. I believe he also used um, Copic markers in general overall with whatever he's uh, coloring. And uh, so far, that's what he's been basically using for many years. Obviously, like stuff like the computer to enhance and crop and clean up things as well, but mostly just Copic markers. And very cool stuff. Um, I would say his style is um. I don't know, it has matured recently a lot more, but in a way it's kind of lost this, you know, this look right here. Man, it's old. It's like one of the first things I ever remember seeing in a, a Bleach manga. I believe it was in like Volume 1. Yeah. Well, that works still pretty solid as well. Just gets even cleaner later on down the line. Another very solid, you know, illustration right here. No for real background here, but definitely still looks really cool. Um, I like how he uh, does his hatching. He puts hatching in a lot of different areas um, to define a lot of different things. Uh, but I, I would I would I would think less in a colored illustration, but he definitely still utilizes those every now and then. You see them somewhere on his colored illustrations. A lot of other people's colored illustrations look more like this. They don't have many hatching lines on them anymore. They just use um, their color to showcase um, what the hatching usually does. You know, hatching usually used for um, texture and um, lighting to a certain degree, like a hard or like a distinct shadow or something like that. Whereas though he, um, they usually now now they usually just use um, a different a darker color value for that. Also notice how he uses like a colored pencil right here. That's pretty different. Yeah, I've seen a lot of this art in the Shonen Jump magazine of the US version. It's um very cool stuff. Yeah, he, he did a lot of covers. This is my favorite freaking character from the series right here. Kenpachi. Um this was also in the Shonen Jump. I remember when they were introducing it. There was like this little spread, little interview with him, Kite Kubo. 
kind of talking about the series and the big swords and everything. I did some studies out of this book to just get um, a little better with like, uh, I don't know, just practicing from whatever he uh, he was doing with his markers and stuff. There's a lot of great people out there who use markers. Um, TC Cool was pretty dope. Yeah. I like mainly like his usage of blacks though. His uses of blacks along with his colors. Like, uh, like this, this is like one of my favorite type of things that he does. This is a very good time in Bleach as well. As far as storytelling was going on, um, yeah, this is this is really dope. It's really cool. Very cool usage of hatching. Love the the added little brush effect to this word bubble. Um, the energy of the um, it was like a spirit beast or something. Behind him, it's coming to kind of take Rukia's life. His art definitely fit a certain aesthetic with a uh, pop art, so he started to do these really cool things with like uh, thick lines around his characters, look like stickers. You got stuff like this going on. Um, it's very very cool. It's definitely one of the most popular styles that you would find in the magazine as well. Definitely very um, distinct. You know what you were getting into when you saw Bleach manga. But um, yeah, I really dig this book. There's a lot of good stuff to learn from and check out and uh, get hype about. Also, he's very good at drawing, you know, females and whatnot like that, and women. Swimsuits and beach scenes. Um, I really dig these magazines, I mean these books, because, like, they basically, uh, they showcase, like, all the extra work that goes around creating the lore and feel and aesthetic to your series beyond just um, what happens inside the comic pages itself. Um, like all these characters look very distinct in color, even if they wear the same uniform, all of them have a different demeanor to them, you know, a different, um, visual trait to, you know, whether or not it's in their facial features or how they wear certain things and stuff like that. They all look pretty distinct. Their eyes look different, you know, there's some really cool stuff right here, some storyboards from one of the manga chapters from Bleach. It's also really cool to see. It's just really cool to see um, how clean these look from a seasoned professional who has to draw this type of thing all the time. And you just look at it and you're just like, man, there isn't even like uh, any like guidelines for the faces. They're just there. Kinda. Here's more um, of his ink art. Which again showcases his understanding of making something look really cool on the page with just using black and white which I think is a very important skill to have and uh, again showing again the characteristics of each character being very different from one another and how they act by themselves um, this artwork this artwork was basically created between if I remember correctly, uh, three years. It was like 2000. It's on one of these pages. Yeah, 2005 through 2007, I believe. Um, but yeah, this art book is really cool. You can definitely check it out on uh, Amazon. I believe it's only 20 bucks when it first came out, so you should be able to find it cheaper. It's soft cover. I have the links in the description for this book and the other book I'll be flipping through and reviewing. So yeah. Next book is this Tech on Concrete book. And uh, it's a really cool book. This is the one that doesn't have as many color pages. But um, even so, the drawings and illustrations in there are well worth it. 
and like they have like the lighting going on with it with all this right here and yeah if you don't know Tekon can read is like in an older anime um from back in the day look there goes Astro Boy and uh and uh it was really it was really cool my girlfriend at the time she had like a PSP and like she basically got like a U, couple UMDs with like a percentage of it and um that's how I saw this anime. I was like, oh, this is cool. Like, it has this little disk space media, you know, that you can check out, you know, different things on. Um, and uh, Tech on Concrete was right there, so we both checked that out. And it was really entertaining and just nice to watch. Um, the backgrounds were, I mean, I don't want to say lifelike because it's very stylistic, but basically it looked very lived in. Despite, you know, the depiction of it, you know, basically being a decaying city um, and not, you know, it's not going well in this city. It doesn't look like things are being very prosperous here. It looks very lived in. Um, it doesn't look very mechanical at all. At all. Um, it looks like a lot of people, I mean, the person who drew this just, you know, maybe he used or she used a grid. Um a very simple one that they would go off of, but made sure that they weren't just taking a ruler and just, you know, deadlining everything like a machine would. So yeah, everything has this little dent and curve that naturally kind of happens to everything. Everything looks kind of like it's not in a perfect state, but it does exist and it does have structure and it does have to a degree life to it, you know. Character. Um but yeah, as you can see the drawings are really dope in this book. Um they're very cool and I just again I love stuff like this because it shows you the extra work and extra time that people spend trying to breathe life into these creations that become animations or comics or what have you. And uh, this is the type of work that, you know, I want to be producing behind the scenes. Um, I may not show all of it because it may, not, it may not all make it into the story. But if I could get a couple different drawings in like this, even a week, you know, even in a week while also working on the comic that I'm trying to produce myself, um, that would be really cool. Because then, you know, I'd be able to hopefully create a decent art book, you know, like this one. And just, you know, have people check out my work that way. But, um, you know, like when people, they get used to drawing like a certain type of aesthetic. Like, oh, my city is going to be inspired by this type of aesthetic and um, be based off of like a certain type of architecture and stuff like that. This has that and more. It's like uh, you can look at any part of the city. You can tell that it's not that other part, you know, like it's still the same whole entire city, but since everything is so distinct and has such distinct details, you know, it, uh, it just, it's just really cool to see all the extra work, as I guess. Um, this book, I believe, is only available in hardcover. It doesn't have a softcover version, so I believe it's going to run you 30 bucks and up at least. Um, I got mine through, I believe, Anime Books. It was on sale, but I'll have a link for Amazon because I believe they might have it for cheaper at this point. So, yeah, if you haven't seen Tech on Concrete, definitely check out the anime. It's a little old by now, so you can should be able to find it somewhere and check it out. I believe it also has a comic or manga, which I haven't checked out myself, but. I do want to. I don't know if it's licensed, so somebody can tell me in the comments whether or not it's licensed, but I would definitely like to check out that comic as well. Alright. If you guys have any suggestions for other books you might want me to cover that I might have to get and check out and tell you guys what I think, please leave suggestions in the comments below. Um, please, uh, if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram, 